Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Tiny10 23H1. Now as you notice, this is a new release of Tiny10, it came out on May 31st, so just about 6 days ago. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at it and seeing what's new and basically how does this build of Tiny10 run. NT Dev has been pretty on top of updating his Tiny10 and Tiny11 series, which is actually a pretty good thing considering most people like who make custom Windows distributions kind of release them and then never update them. So this is going to definitely bring bug fixes to the OS as well as some various other things. One thing to note about this build is actually the naming scheme. This is 23H1, which as you know, Windows 10 isn't going past 22H2. 22H2 is the last build of Windows 10. So where is the 23H1 coming from? That is just to indicate that it came out in the first half of 2023. This has nothing to do with the actual official Windows build. This ISO is 3.7 gigabytes, which to me is a lot for a tiny OS. But of course, the ISO size doesn't really matter. It matters what the actual installed Windows OS is. So going through, this is the Windows 10 installer. So of course, we're going to see that old logo there. Um, this ISO is running off of a network drive, so it is a little slow right now. But um, there we go. We're going to go ahead and let this OS install. Alright, and here we are in the out-of-box experience. Now, most tiny di Windows distributions, like Nexus Lite OS 11, doesn't actually include the out-of-box experience within the ISO. It immediately creates a user account and opts you into a whole bunch of things as soon as you install the OS. So, including the out-of-box experience is definitely something that I have a lot of respect for NT Dev for doing. I know we've taken a look at a lot of NT Dev OS's recently. I know it feels like I've been praising him a lot, but this is truly the best tiny Windows distribution. I mean, the transparency of having the ability to run a PowerShell script to make your own version of Tiny11 and not just have to quote trust NT Dev that he doesn't put anything in it. Like you can literally look at the script. Um, that's incredible. The amount of transparency and just time and effort that goes into maintaining this Tiny 10 and 11 series of operating systems it's incredible all right and here we are so the first thing we're going to do is install vmware tools and while we install the iso i'm going to talk about some of the new features that are packed in tiny 10 23h1 so for starters the the component store comes back this is the biggest feature in tiny 10 that has been requested um, which means you can add new languages and features while still being a lightweight and dependable image Definitely something that a lot of people have requested over the last few months, according to NT Dev. Next is that it can stay updated, like Tiny11 can. I'm not sure if previous versions of Tiny10 did this, um, but I know that Windows Update was shut down to prevent, you know, bloat from possibly breaking the operating system as this is a heavily customized image. But as we can see here, Windows Update is still a function that is included inside of this build and is definitely something that I like as it'll be able to stay secure as time goes on. And lastly, this, those who have an older version of Tiny10 that they're running can easily upgrade to 23H1. This will be a very smooth in-place upgrade for them. Haven't tested it, but that's the claim that they're making. So, first thing to notice immediately, Microsoft Edge is included by default. I know in previous OSs, and I believe in Tiny11, it's been a while since I've looked at it, a web browser was not included by default. So I definitely appreciate the fact that they have one because I remember seeing a lot of people like, well, how do we get a web browser on the OS if there's not one in there by default? I remember in my original Tiny10 video, I ended up pulling a Chrome installer from my FTP server. And many people were like, well, how'd you get to the FTP server? I don't know how to, I don't have one. You know, you have to move it over USB. But I remember that was definitely a fact in the original OS. So yeah, as for Tiny10, this is a relatively standard image for NT Dev. You know, literally only the core components are installed here. Not much is here. Um, going into settings, I believe this is still Windows 10 LTSC 21H2, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look here. Yes, Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC 21H2, 19.044. So. Those are really the key new components of Tiny10. Um, really appreciate the updates that are coming through in this version of Windows. Um, if someone's going to continue updating Windows, it's going to be NT Dev, especially after Microsoft basically ditched Windows 10 at 22H2. I'm definitely excited to see the future and possibly even NT Dev. This is just an idea, not a confirmed rumor. 
possibly NT Dev somehow creating his own custom version of Windows 10 that can continue on past 2025. As we all know, computers that don't support Windows 11 are basically screwed after 2025 at this point. So, you know, I'm very excited to see possibly NT Dev maintaining Tiny 10 that will run on that hardware and possibly somehow, if it's possible, shifting the Windows 11 security updates to work with Windows 10. So with that being said, this is just a brief video taking a look at this custom OS. Definitely a cool concept, definitely something that I believe now at this point as time has gone on, this is available and this is a good OS that someone could probably daily drive. And you know, it's come a long way since the, the first time we took a look at Tiny 10 and I am very proud to say that this has come, this is a good operating system at this point and I would definitely consider daily driving it if I had an older machine. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new out here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device debt restoration.